I'm going to play a study by Hamakate, and it's called Swinging Waltz. Can you see me? All right. I think we have some. Let me try. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. That was great. Thank you. So this was the, I, I, I have the music here, I think, of the swing, Swinging Waltz by Gus Havercarter, yeah. right? The Dutch composer. Yeah. Yes. So it sounds fantastic. I think this is kind of a, a double purpose piece, probably, because it's both a waltz, which is very like musical, but also of course, he wrote it also uh, with, with in his mind as a kind of a recorder attitude almost for articulation. And I think what you did really well is you took freedom in the time so that it sounded like like a musical piece instead of instead of an attitude. So I think that was really mm -hmm. great. Um, and I think it's always the question how far you can go in in taking that freedom, especially with the walls. There's always this moment of the the lift. And the fully, I always like to uh, watch videos of like these ancient uh, uh, Viennese balls uh, in all the movies. Of course, you you have many of them, and you can really, if you look at the dance, you understand the music of the waltz and the movement that uh, that the dancers need to kind of be lifted off the ground and to uh, retake the motion again. I think you already did it did it brilliantly, but that's something maybe we could we could try to to work on a little bit. Um, and also what you did well is the, the two different sections. Uh, there's kind of this jazzy middle middle section with that. Da, 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 da. Uh, I've actually, it's funny, I've, uh, this reminds me of, because this, we are doing this over Zoom, um, I've started taking some uh, jazz improvisation lesson, lessons over Zoom with someone in Italy uh, who wrote me a Facebook message uh, and, and asked me like, oh, would you like to learn some, some jazz improvisation? And we've been doing these kind of pieces uh, or improvising on a pentatonic scale, those, those kind of things. So it reminds me of that. So it's funny. So I guess it, it works over Zoom sometimes. Um, let's, let's maybe start with the, with the beginning of, a piece, of the piece. Um, where do you think, just to get the, the, the structure right, yeah, where do you think the, the phrase is, is heading? Because it's it's a very long line. If you look at the it, it doesn't really stop it. The, the movement continues all the time. I don't have any I don't have bar numbers, by the way. But no, neither do I. Yeah, no. Um, and then comes this piece with the like the sequence. I think maybe you can make the moment that you we reach the highest note for the first time, the high A. Da, 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 da. That's kind of the lift moment of the waltz. Yeah. And then it continues again the movement. Maybe, maybe we can make that a little bit even more kind of a dramatic moment for the listener to what comes next and then continue again. Yeah, just try try the beginning again, please. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, he, so he all, what he does actually is he all the time uses these notes with the dot, the overtight notes with the dot. Those are the kind of lift mo mo uh, moments. So. There's another one. And then he takes up the movement again. So maybe you could take a little bit more time whenever there is these um, dotted notes with the with the staccato uh, dot on it. Uh, yeah. Ta -da, ta -da -dum, ta -da. I really like the, mo the moment where you reach the highest note and you took a little bit of extra time. I think it can have that for sure. Yeah. And maybe we can do the same in this where you just stopped, where I just stopped you. Um, and then to make it more convincing that it's kind of a, a question, uh, question moment, and then it retakes again the, the movement. Maybe you could start in the uh, where the sequence start with the like the. I don't know if you can find the place which yeah, yeah. yeah great stop you because it was it was so nice i really like the 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 place where you just started you took a lot more time for the for the dotted note it was always like this questioning moment and then again it takes up the movement i think that that works really well for this piece to kind of make it make the timing flexible and also i think with the because it's a recorder piece obviously he tries to use all these different articulation types because i think one of the things that i love so much about the recorder is the quickness that you can change the the articulation it's a very a direct instrument so we have a lot of possibilities to like make the smallest changes in in the letters you use or you say in your mouth whereas if you play a horn for example you need so much preparation for one tone that it's a less flexible instrument in a way so that's i think you can take advantage of that even more maybe um in places like the the staccato notes uh, like make it even more I don't know, it's a different different effect that it doesn't sound like like the rest of the staccato notes, just a yeah, but more as a as a kind of extra spontaneous effect, I would say. Maybe you could start in the I think it's about halfway the piece where there's this uh and then where the beginning comes back basically. <laughs> yeah, that would be great.
fantastic. I think maybe at the end, you, you were so quickly already at the beginning of this, this uh, 16th uh, passage that I didn't hear at all that you did like an accelerando. So maybe, maybe give yourself a little bit of space to kind of uh, uh, start with and then, and then speed up because it's really impressive if you end in the tempo that you just play the whole passage in. Um, okay. So to make it to make it even more into like a proper ending, maybe you could start uh, somewhere just like the transition, the transition to this last section, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, let me see. What is it? Because is this the, the one that's before? Is it like a glissando or what is it supposed to be? I think you did yeah, like. Yeah, I think it's like kind of. Yeah. Like... Okay. Yeah. I don't know either. Uh... Maybe also what would help is if you make the articulation um, in the beginning, the, the, the bows, which are over the two notes, the slurs. Uh, if you could make them even more uh, um, uh, take care of the closing of the of the slur, uh, that's kind of this technique that I talked about before that we can do as a recorder player. We can uh, and end all the notes very precisely with our tongue. So maybe try that because then it will take more time for you in the beginning, and then at the end you can let loose and kind of speed up. That was great. The beginning was really great. Yeah, that was fantastic. It works really well, I think, to, to also vary the articulation a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And this swing movement, this swing uh, passage, I think you do it brilliantly. I don't want to want to say anything about it. It has the perfect, I think, the perfect kind of jazzy rhythm. So, uh, yeah, and you have a beautiful sound. So it was a pleasure to listen to you. Great playing. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. I, it's, this is such a tricky piece. I, I played it myself only recently, actually, for the first time. And I noticed it's so difficult to keep to keep the tempo in control and to, to uh, keep some room for the end to, to accelerate. By the way, actually, I think it might have been my own connection, actually, because I'm in the... Maybe my Wi-Fi connection is not very strong, but sometimes the, 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 the sound of your... Um, uh, of your your Zoom recording was was accelerating and slowing down again, so I wasn't sh completely sure if it was the connection or if you did it yourself, the the timing thing. But I think it's good you 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 started so like uh, not giving everything away yet because that's with this piece I think you need to really keep the tension until the end. Have you actually played um, any pieces by Van Eyck, other pieces by Van Eyck before? Um, I mean, I played the the preludium of the Voskill. 
Yes, yeah, that's the one uh, uh, I often play it as an introduction before like another piece, because you can, if it connects well, then you can use it as a, as a prelude. Oh, that's nice. And um, because I wanted to, I wanted to talk maybe about the, the shape of this piece, because that's the, it's, it's almost like a unique piece in the whole Fluit and Lustof, that's this whole collection that he composed. Um, because it goes in a continuous motion and it develops in in this in a scheme of eight bars basically if you look at the yam pam 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 that's the theme and then it varies it varies itself um so it's almost as if it's like a chord scheme instead of a melody that he makes the variations on so that's that's also what makes it very tricky because it can um I think if it, yeah, it can begin to sound boring if you don't make it like uh, if you don't make it varied, varied enough because it's all, always the same harmonies repeating. Yes, that was great. That was really great. I think with Van Eyck always the, the, the tricky thing is to have this, uh, this different voices. You are on your own. Of course, you play one melody, but you have to pretend like it's different people having a, having a dialogue almost. So, um, for example, in this, if we take the last bar that you played as an example, on the upper, st upper voices were in and the lower voice. So it has to sound in. So how could you what what could you use as a as a means to make clear that these are like two different functions within one line? What do you think? Um, um, Maybe you also play the saxophone, right? Yeah. Yes. So it's just it, it would be the same on, on saxophone. What what are the ways in which you can make a difference between two lines? I mean, we have uh, what do we have? Um, well, I mean, at the beginning, it's just crotchets, and then it moves on to quavers. Yes. So you mean the, the, the rhythm? Yeah. The rhythm yeah, actually. that's that's very true, I think. And even even more like explicit than the rhythm, the, the, the timing that you use within one thing. So you could choose to like always play the second note a bit later. But that would be a bit ridiculous. But you can also use a subtle uh, just articulation difference because that's obviously also on saxophone probably a, a big means of expression so if you could try to um could you once play for me the the, the upper melody from this last bar so that's yum, dum, 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 dum. just so only the upper notes yeah perfect and then and then now the what is the bass line Yes, perfect. And now can you try to make a, make a difference between these two while playing everything? Yes, that was much better already, I think, than last time when you played it. That was really convincing for me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you can also do a little bit of these kind of funny jokes uh, uh, already before, because you stay quite uh, strictly in the in the rhythm of the... But you could always also uh, once play it long, for example, uh, to to keep it kind of kind of interesting. Could you maybe try that for the um, when the when the first variation starts with the I never know how to call the notes in English. It's very <laughs> difficult for me. The not the, the crotchets, but the quavers. I think that's the that's the one I use. I Wait mean, so the one after the theme, basically. That one. 
Would you start there? Yes, that was great. Continue, continue. This was nice. This was much more versatile and surprising. Yeah. Yes, I really heard the different voices in the last thing. The only thing which I think was still maybe a little bit boring. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can do anything. It's, it's very clear. Just, just always make it kind of sound interesting because from that point where you are now, you don't have to do much anymore because it's basically just speeding up. So, so that keeps it kind of, kind of interesting, I think. Um, and I've one, one, um, but maybe I don't know if Barbara agrees <laughs> agrees with this. Um, but it's just a, a trick that I use myself for for the end to speed up extra. Actually, I sometimes play with slurs over two notes to make it because it's almost not possible anymore to do it with the articulation. And you were you kept strong until the end with articulating every single note. But I think what could work, you would have to decide where where it's most convincing to do this. But to end, uh, for example, from like the last eight bars, just to give yourself a little bit of, of kind of breathing space. Okay, let's let's continue. Play play the end ones more, more for me. Yes, nice, nice. I think with the, um, uh, with the, there, so there is this one variation where there's already a continuous stream of 16th notes. And then Jacob van Eyck realizes that actually he has to still continue for some more variations. So that's why he goes back to the pattern of a, to kind of have a different pattern again. And then he continues again with the 16th. I think uh, it shouldn't sound like a step back. Uh, when this section comes with the, where the, where the quavers come back. Um, but it should, should sound like an extra, uh, extra step because of the large jumps. So maybe you could maybe make that a little bit more dramatic. Like, and then, and then it kind of rolls yeah. itself out. I think that was the last thing I, I want to tell you. I have to... Um, I think for the last section, as I already said, maybe you can try this. Uh, you can try it for yourself out if you if you like it and if it works uh, with the slurs over two notes, um, because it will also give you more. Uh, yeah, more more ability to maybe even accelerate a little bit until the end. I'm playing Big Baboon by Paul Lee Houts. It's sort of a story of a, well, the movements, the first one's called The Jungle, the second one's called Catch That Cookie Monster, and the third one's called The Zoo, and it's just about sort of a baboon escaping and sort of running around the jungle a bit. Crazy. <laughs>
Fantastic. Wow. <laughs> maybe we should just start at the beginning and yeah, maybe play the beginning once more for me and then we'll, we'll go through the, through the different sections of the piece. Yeah, sure. I think the, the the theme I'm very convinced by because it's such a like it's it's going in this pulse da, 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 something you can't stop almost and then there comes this like interruption suddenly with the first um, the first pulse that he writes da, 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 uh, uh. it's like a kind of like you stop and you and you shout something in the like echo <laughs> echo in the jungle and and you wait for for a response. So I think maybe you could make that even more like really stay also don't move in the in the rest that's that's often with contemporary music you you notice like the, the less is less is more like the, the less you move the stronger the the effect will be um uh to make the pause even more abrupt because it's really the first time we we have a chance to hear silence like the, the piece starts in, in such a rush and uh, maybe you could start like one bar before before that uh yeah wherever um yeah Yes, that was great. And then, and then maybe even the second time, because it's uh, obviously uh, even more like it goes and, and the crescendo, maybe you could make a little bit more. Uh, well, sorry, I cannot play this piece, but <laughs> like go, uh, take the crescendo even into the last note, because you, you of course, the flutter tune is louder, but yeah, and then go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Try once more. That's great. Yeah. 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 yeah that's it. So great. Also to have this extra like the second the the, the the uh, how do you say overtreffen overtreffen uh, uh, yeah like extra um, yeah. and and the 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 other thing. I think with all these endings that go down, th that with recorder they tend to kind of not be audible just because of the it goes down in random and you don't hear the last note. So every time that the phrase goes down, you have to kind of keep the the attention upward. So uh, when it's for example the is that, is that the uh, like da -da 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 -da. instead of uh, because then people, it's like, oh, we, we don't hear it. So maybe you could make that. And then. Yeah, so one last time just for, just for me. <laughs> This is so much more. Yeah, this work works really great. How does it how does it feel for you? This yeah, it feels like more character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe it feels like you're overdoing it, but because that's sometimes. I mean, you yeah. Obviously, when you practice a piece yourself, you all the time think like, well, I I know what's there. But but for the listener, if you hear a, a piece like this for the first time, you're like, what's happening? You you really need the time to process it. So the more you make it, you yeah, the more you make it theatrical, theatrically clear, and in a way also more simple for the listener. So that's that's why keeping still sometimes in in movement helps helps the listener to ta -da -ta, ta -da -ta, gives them the space because if you're doing all these things then uh, then people actually uh, look at your movements instead of instead of the music. It's funny how it's also when I go to concerts I notice that the um, if I listen to a performer who clearly is above the the music and then then I can also enjoy the music more because it's um, it's this way of it's just easier to focus if someone who is on the stage is also very focused i guess it. yeah it's a very mysterious uh, principle um i think the rest of this was great do you have actually uh, before because maybe we run out of time at some point do you have any questions that you for sure want to ask me about this i don't guarantee that i have an answer but i can i can try if you have some um 
it's mainly just at the end the um the trill i obviously don't have an eight key with oh this. yeah that i i was looking at this i was like how should we what is the yeah. uh, i don't want to <laughs> Yeah, I think what what you did sound sounded good. Yeah, so you have to use the knee every time you. So that's difficult yeah. with the tenor, but because standing then with the knee is really like a, a hassle. Yeah. Usually when I play contemporary <laughs> music that uses a lot of the 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 eighth hole, I usually sit, just because it's then you can kind of you don't uh, have the chance of um, how to say uh, hitting your own teeth with the, because it can be quite dangerous if you're in the fury of playing and and you're doing the and then the concert you you. <laughs> hit yourself with the recorder. I, I had a funny story. My, my teacher, uh, Walter van Houwe, uh, used to tell this story a lot of, uh, he told me many times, so I remember, uh, that he once played Sweet by Louis Andriessen, also a Dutch composer. Um, and there's this very intense passage that has the, the eighth, uh, the hole that uses the bottom hole of the recorder. And it's, that apparently he really hit his lip and there was blood like <laughs> dripping down the instrument while he was playing but of course he had to continue because that's that's what you do as a performer but it was a very intense story and i i remember thinking like oh we have to do you have to take care to avoid that from happening just for your own uh, for your own safety so i think yeah well, what you what you did was great with the just adding the knee whenever it says like the the eight it's you can also use it as some kind of theatrical um, I also think with these kind of multiphonic things, I didn't get the notes that he wrote when I used the fingering that he writes. So I yeah. think you shouldn't, uh, it doesn't matter too much if it's not exactly those notes. I think it's more the effect of, uh, with these multiphonics, for example, it's like ta da, ta da. So it's all the time a uh, uh, appoggiatura basically. So you have to translate it into the big, what is the gesture that he wants? And then I think the notes are kind of, if it's not exactly what it should be so i think you did it very exactly but but that's the same principle as with this ending with the trill if you think that something works better on your instrument you should definitely just change it and do that i think uh paul lanehouts would be more than happy if it if it helps the, 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 to bring the music that he was was uh, writing uh, to bring it more convincingly uh, and i think you are a good judge of that because you compose yourself as well so uh, yeah thank you let me think what what else did i was I thinking when you were playing? Oh yes, the connection between the two sections, like this this weird sound, the the wah, the wah. You but you did it quite well, I think. But the uh, yeah, I don't know how I would do. Maybe I, I let's let's do the bar, the one in bar eighteen, uh, maybe. Yeah. When it comes for the first time, yeah. Maybe play it once more for me. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that was great. I think the, uh, well, oh yeah, now I remember what I was thinking when you were playing. Maybe the crescendo could be even a little bit more because it sounds a little bit like you would like a, like a demon when we cast the, the wah ends in the, the recorder sound. So maybe if you bring it more outside, then then it sounds more like a crescendo. Like that's like opening the mouth. I don't know. You you can try if this if this. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the basically almost as if the sound catapults the recorder out of your like the voice takes over. Yeah. Yes, that was great. Yeah, I think that was better. Yeah, because then also it sounds more difficult. I think all the time you have to, uh, when something is, is, is written as intent, but then of course it's pianissimo. So that's the thing that I'm getting annoyed about because I'm like, well, <laughs> pianissimo, come on. <laughs> so it should be like, have some kind of yeah, so the same, exactly the same what you did, but then bring it back to like, maybe maybe less movement that will already make it seem like it's softer, but you don't actually have to play softer. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think it was good. Yeah, do you want to try again? Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
And I think the trick with the voice is always, if there's voice involved in anything, always focus on the voice. Because the, the recorder thing will go automatically. It's the same with this, uh, the last note from this section. Um, always, you have to always only focus on the on the voice. That's also something my, my teacher used to say. That that really helps a lot to really because the voice is the thing that you have to kind of take take care of. It's it's the the the, the strange thing for yourself. So also with this wah, maybe that will help. Make it so only pay attention to the wah 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 something like that. Maybe yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's good. And if it does, if maybe it works for you to even take the to like open the mouth because then it's clearly a wah yeah. <laughs> a sound if, if the mouth is open. Yeah, maybe try try love one last time. Yeah, I think that was better. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. And then, and then, if you play once more the like the last bar of this um, of this section, so that we do the the one with the voice also, like twen bar twenty four. Mm -hmm. um. Yes. Yeah. So what is this sing? So I think the singing turns into a wa. And with you, it sounds, well, it's also written that way, but it sounds like the Y is a separate uh, event that's happening. So maybe what could we do to make the Y more like the end result of this movement? Um, what do you actually do when you sing in the recorder? Do you have a special, what sound do you try to, like, um, did, did you think about it at all? Or do you just like use a, a voice sound like a random or? I sort of just picture an open throat. I know that's really old. Yeah, but... yeah. That that can work for sure. What also uh, uh, for me sometimes it works to uh, actually sing an um, uh, like an u, but I don't know if it's in English. You you even have this sound, but u because because it gives your it gives more control over the voice sometimes if you have a, a, a certain vowel that you are trying to or even e e because it's u. This is actually I'm doing u u. Because it's, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it gives you more more control in, in, instead of just doing the open throat. But for sure, if it needs to be loud, then the open throat works always. Mm -hmm. But to have this beginning of the of the note, because it's difficult to to get this interval right uh, with the yeah. voice, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe try once more. Can you experiment a little bit with this with this U shape? It doesn't sound like an U at all when you listen to to how it sounds. But it's just for your own mental mm -hmm. to in the to sing in the recorder in the shape of an U. Yeah. Yeah, or even ooh, you can experiment whatever it feels good for your for your mouth to to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how does it go? And then yeah, it's difficult to get it really. Uh, yeah, I guess it's an advantage. My teacher always said it's an advantage to be a woman or girl performing a contemporary piece because as soon as you sing, you have the right the right range, you have the right octave that you play it in. Instead of with a man, it always sounds an octave lower than it's than it's written. So I guess we have an advantage already. Um, yeah, I think this works really well. <laughs> Wow, yeah, really, really great. It's difficult, this turkey. Um, maybe you could make even more difference between the when the glissando is just a glissando and when the glissando is with vibrato uh, together. So, and also maybe in the movement a little bit, try to, um, and then, and then go forward again when it's the crescendo, tora, tora, uh, and then, tora, tora, tora. But not, I mean, you shouldn't do this too much, but yeah. 
Yeah, yeah in good taste. <laughs> Yes, yeah, maybe feel even more the first note as the time because it's it's that's the difficult thing with these jumps that it always sounds like like a, an upbeat to the instead of um, because that's probably why he writes the stripe because he wants to kind of emphasize your time yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that was great. Yeah, and then the and yeah. What does he mean with his vibrato? Maybe it's more like um uh, like a, a, a chevrote. I think it's called like that. That it's very that it's like very fast because if you do a proper vibrato, you don't have time for that. And you that that's why maybe I don't hear the vibrato enough. Uh, so I, maybe we should change it into like just a, um, a fast vibration. Can you try that like the with the throat basically instead of Perfect. yeah I think that maybe that that works better I don't know if he meant to write that but I think it, it will work better could you try once more one last song yes yeah nice yeah I think this works out and then it comes back yeah that's nice and then it becomes this uh... and there i felt uh, i remember from the first time where you played it maybe make them a little bit shorter that it sounds more like a, a jungle effect than but yeah yeah yes yeah that's very nice yeah yeah it's very it sound very like mysterious and uh like a monkey sound yes this this weird section where it goes into the um, diminuendo and it says that you have to repeat and accelerate at the same time i think you did it really well um could you do it once more for me because there was something that i forgot yeah. to uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's great. I think it's great. It works really well. Yeah. And so he, I didn't really hear that you did uh, what he writes the that the rhythm should be ta da 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 or or am I mistaken? Maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it should be like it should sound like a like the jazzy triplet or something. Ta da 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 da. Maybe exaggerate it a little bit so that it's very clear that it's a different rhythm than just ta da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yes, very good. Great. And then um and then if you continue with these this weird multiphonics the, the the passage just continue where you where you stopped. Oh, yeah. Yes, that was great. I think again here you can use the the silences more as an um, attention thing to, to kind of keep the because with you, I hear it as like a, everything is an action instead of just. Am I playing right? Yeah. Like kind of like da 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 da. 
yeah, because it's pianissimo. So you really want something like far in the distance, like you hear some kind of, yeah, you can imagine whatever you want, like a jungle, like a different animal, <laughs> maybe a bird that's responding in the zoo. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Yes, that was great because now it really was a surprise. Also, this da, da, da. it's like the, the orang utan is coming back, <laughs> and then there's this weird like. Yeah, is it just a, does it ju does it mean just a just a finger tapping sound? Yeah, just that. But I use my key just to make it a bit louder. Yeah, to make an extra like yeah, yeah. Maybe actually. If, if you if you have the kind of power to do it on the open hole, I like the sound if it if, unless you play in like a huge hole, of course. Um, but I always like the sound better of just an open finger hole because I don't like the, the sound of the that the, the flap of the, the key at the end you hear instead of yeah. just one sound, which would uh, and, and it seems he wants something that's like one thing, like yeah. Or maybe yeah i don't know you could you can do both depending on which kind of uh, setting of course because if it's a concert hall you you do it's always the do you know this piece by um berio luciano berio jesty the sequence which you wrote it, it starts with only the finger tapping of the finger holes and it's always you have to prepare the audience for that before you play it because otherwise they're like has it started already the piece it's very confusing for people so yeah but I think it's a piece that works really well and you, you really bring it very, very uh, convincingly. So I think the main thing is to, to really use the silences as something expressive, uh, as if it was like a silence in a jungle and there's some other animal responding afterwards. Um, yeah, so that it really uh, sounds like an, like an effect and something that you're imitating. Um, yeah, but, but I, really, I really enjoyed it a lot. And um, yeah, good luck with your, your also your composing still. Thank you. <laughs> It's a good time to be a composer, I guess, Corona. Yeah, COVID. it is. Yeah, because you can do that. You can do it anywhere. You can lock yourself up and uh, be completely independent. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.